If you are one of those turbo nerds who tried to get 100% kills in series 7 the first encounter, you've probably noticed that in most levels there's always a number of kills you've missed, even if you explored every inch of the level. So what's up with that? Let's just get to the point and check out the maximum amount of kills per level you can get, along with a thorough explanation with the kill count of said levels broken. One more thing before we begin, this video will only cover kill counts when playing on series difficulty, the other difficulties are beyond the scope of this video. First up, Tempo of Hotship Suit. The first level of the first encounter contains 80 enemies. There's a couple of specific triggers you need to pass through, but it's nothing complicated. Fortunately, Series M comes with a level editor, so you can play the levels with all triggers and spawners set to visible. The footage shown in this video will be from the level editor, with visible map entities for clarification. The green blocks are triggers, and the blue spiky things are enemy spawners. Anyway, explore the tempo thoroughly, pick up all the items, and you'll make all the enemies appear. Do not forget to blow up the tree at the secret oasis to spawn extra harpies. The secret croton guys also count the skills, so show no mercy. Final verdict, no broken kill count, 80 out of 80 kills. Level 2 is pretty straightforward. If you play the map normally and go over all secrets and items, you will end up with all the kills. Conclusion, nothing broken here, 196 out of 196 kills. Tomb of Ramses III. This is the first level in the game where you will notice that getting all kills seems impossible, and that's a fact. No matter how many times you beat the level, pick up all the items, explore every single floor tile of this godforsaken tomb, you will always miss those last two kills. So what the heck? Did Crotty miscalculate the kill count? Or how about we ask a better question first? How are kill counts determined? Kill counts are calculated when a level loads. It's not very complicated. You place an enemy, the kill count increments. Same happens when you place an enemy spawner. The way enemy spawners work in Series Sam is quite interesting. First, you need to provide an enemy template. These will not increment the kill count on their own, but the spawners that use them will. So let's create a simple enemy spawner here. Let's place a clear template outside this room. Then place a weapon here, and an enemy spawner here. We'll tell the enemy spawner to use the clear as a template. Then, we will tell the weapon that when it's picked up, it must trigger the enemy spawner. So let's test it out and see the kill count. 1 out of 1. Alright, seems logical. What if we remove the weapon? Now nothing will trigger the enemy spawner. Hmm. 0 out of 1. Uh oh. We created a broken spawner. And that's exactly what's going on in Tomb of Ramses III. Beat the level going for 100% kills like you would normally do, but with spawners set to visible. You may notice that in the final arena, there's a spawner that didn't trigger. Let's go see what's up with that one. So in the editor, you can toggle arrows to see how entities interact with each other. You can see these red arrows here that show that these triggers will trigger the enemy spawners. What about the one enemy spawner in the final arena we just mentioned? Well, there's no red arrow here. Nothing is targeting it, so nothing interacts with it. Unfortunately, it still increments the kill count, so here's an impossible kill for you. There's another broken spawner in this level. This one right here is even more sloppy. Nothing interacts with it, and it doesn't even have a template. Strangely enough, even without a template, it still increments the kill count by 1. So final verdict, 241 out of 243 is the maximum amount of kills you can get. Bummer. Now, with our newfound knowledge about enemy spawners, let's check out level 4. There's this pool of water with electro fish in it. Grab the items, and you will notice how the spawners responsible for the fish will disappear when emptied. Except these three. Before we discuss these spawners, let's talk about spawn flags. Each entity in Series M has spawn flags that determine conditions when an entity should appear or not. For example, you can make this enemy only appear on easy and normal difficulties by unchecking the heart and Series flags. The map won't increment the kill count of enemy spawners if the spawn flags are set in a way that they shouldn't appear. For instance, I have two spawners here. One only appears on easy difficulty, the other one on serious difficulty. If we test the map, you'll see that only one spawner increments the total kill count. Now, what if we set an intermediary entity to trigger the spawner? Meet the trigger entity. This trigger entity allows you to trigger up to 10 different entities. With this single entity, we'll trigger these three enemy spawners when you grab the weapon. See? Now, what happens if we change the spawn flags of the weapon pickup to a different difficulty? <laughs> oh crap, say hello to three broken spawners. And now back to Valley of the Kings, 
that's what happens to these three spawners. The health item only shows up on easy and normal difficulties, but the enemy spawners have spawn flex set to all difficulties. There's four fish here that are unable to spawn. <clears throat> Final verdict, 320 out of 324 kills is the maximum. The first secret level series M and ugh, it's an annoying one. Getting max kills on this one is a bit of a pain because monsters that fall into the abyss don't always die. Have fun looking for tiny shootable pixels down there to kill. Anyway, there's two broken spawners here that are supposed to spawn 12 clear skeletons, but the trigger entity spawn flex are set to not to appear on any difficulty. I don't know what's that about, but okay. Before we move on, let's quickly discuss some enemy spawner types. There's the simple variant that just spawns everything at once, then there's a respawnable type that will keep spawning a new monster when you kill the enemy, it will stop respawning until the given count reaches zero. Then there's a triggered spawner that will only spawn something when triggered, and last but not least, the teleporter type. This will teleport a non-template enemy to the spawner. With that out of the way, let's continue with Moon Mountains. There's these two spawners that spawn reptiloids. Their count is set to 2, so they can spawn 2 reptiloids each in total. While the spawner type is set to triggered, which means it will only spawn stuff when triggered. They're only triggered once, so the second reptiloids never appear. There's two more reptiloids that only spawn on hard difficulty, but they use the rare teleporter spawner type that makes use of non-template enemies. The spawners don't appear on serious difficulty, but the two pseudo-templates can still be found out of bounds. And since they're not templates, they both increment the kill count. In theory, you could potentially go out of bounds without cheating somehow and kill them. But I haven't found a way to do that yet. I'd love to hear this if this is possible. Up next is level 6, Oasis. There's quite a few broken spawners in this level, and they're all in the beginning area. There's one Biomech Major that's supposed to spawn here, but it will only spawn when this trigger is interacted with 4 times. The only thing interacting with it is the dying arachnoids, so this Biomech will never see the light of day. Then there's these 7 Kamikaze spawners. They're all supposed to spawn 2 Kamikazes each, but just like the Reptiloids and Moon Mountains, their spawner type must be triggered each time it should spawn stuff. There's only one trigger that interacts with these spawners, so only 50% of the kamikazes appear. Mm. 687 out of 695 is the maximum kills you can get here. Dunes is an instant classic and a fan favorite. Go for all secrets and you will end up with most of the kills. There's only two anomalies present and they are no big deal. There's two biomech miners that will spawn after a period of time. Once you grab the serious health, the spawn timer will start ticking down. After 100,000 milliseconds, so around 1 minute and a half, the spawners will spawn stuff. It's actually 100,000 seconds. Oh really? 27 hours. Oh, uh, my bad, okay. Small mistake in my script there, it's 100,000 seconds, not milliseconds. So, about 27 hours. If you want to get all the kills in dunes, you're going to have to wait 27 hours for the last spawners to trigger. So, dunes technically has no broken kill count, 368 out of 368 kills. Suburbs has some annoying spawners. Most of them are triggered by picking up random items in the second area. In the end, you end up with 163 kills. The last 7 enemy spawners are biomech miners with a trigger entity that is never fired. Maybe a good thing they cannot spawn, because this place is riddled with them anyway. 163 out of 170. Oh boy, sewers! Another fairly straightforward level, and if going for all secrets and kills, you'll most likely end up with 150 out of 152 kills. Now, where are those two final kills? When looking for these two missing kills, I explored the entire level looking for enemy spawners that didn't activate, but I couldn't find any. So I painstakingly checked each enemy spawner in the level, its triggers, its spawn flags, etc. I spent many hours trying to figure out the mystery of the entity incrementing the kill count by 2. And well, here it is. Notice how in the level editor there's 3 fish? Now, what if we no clip to that room? Huh, only one fish. What happened to the other two? Is it the spawn flags? Nope. It's a very strange collision bug. For some bizarre reason, the moment these two fish start swimming, they disappear. When you erase the markers they are following by a few units, they don't disappear. So I don't know what kind of failsafe Crow team uses that causes stuck enemies to remove themselves, but the two missing kills are just these two fish. There's no way to kill them before they disappear. 150 out of 152. Metropolis is a behemoth of a level, with 1093 enemies to kill. With such a high kill count, it is inevitable that some of those kills are impossible to obtain. 
The first broken spawner is at the very beginning. There's an enemy spawner that has no template enemy, so it spawns nothing. But just like in Tomb of Ramesses III, empty spawners still increment the kill count. The town section of Metropolis is an absolute nightmare if you want to go for all the kills. The amount of triggers and enemy spawners here is insane. So you either need 200 IQ to remember all the trigger placements, or use the map like I did for my playthrough. Anyway, there's one biomech miner that doesn't spawn because its spawn has a capacity of 2, but is only triggered once, so only 1 out of 2 will spawn. Then there's this spawner that's supposed to spawn 8 clear skeletons, but nothing is targeting it, so it's never interacted with. Be careful when dealing with the clear and wearable corridor after grabbing the minigun. When the two yellow arachnoids spawn, whatever you do, do not cross this trigger here. It will deactivate the clear spawner, and you will miss out on a lot of kills. Now comes the biggest batch of broken spawners in the game. 36 wearables that are completely foobar. There's a set for easy difficulty wearables, for normal difficulty wearables, and hard and serious difficulty wearables. But all spawners have the same difficulty spawn flags. The trigger entities don't, however. So the spawners are still loaded regardless of the difficulty you're playing on. So there you go. 1047 out of 1093 kills is the maximum you can get. Um, no, no wait. I swear I've gotten 1049 at some point. Oh right, those enemy spawners. So let's go back to the town section. There's two very strange spawners in here. Their capacity is set to zero, yet they still spawn a single monster. What happens here is that the spawner doesn't increment the kill count during map load, but killing the monster that it still somehow spawns does increment the amount of kills. So these two clear that spawn add up two extra kills, so final verdict. 1049 out of 1093. <sighs> Time for a break. Level 11 is a relatively chill level compared to the monster that is called Metropolis. Here we can also find a couple of broken spawners. There's an enemy spawner in the starting area with no enemy template. In the final area there's two clear spawners that are never targeted. And on top of this column there's a reptiloid spawner that's never triggered because its trigger entity has its spawn flex set to not appear on any difficulty setting. Final verdict. 337 out of 341. Karnak, the first encounter level with the highest total kill count. Surprisingly enough, there aren't that many broken spawners here. In the area with the Temple of Ra, there's a Rocketeer spawner that gets interacted with an activation event instead of a trigger event. The activation event enables an entity, but doesn't trigger it to spawn an enemy. A similar mistake is made with this Reptiloid spawner here. The trigger is trying to activate it instead of triggering it, and therefore, we'll never get to see this green beast. Let's skip ahead to the Ankpu area. There's a leftover arachnoid spawner here from Karnak Demo. It isn't targeted by anything, so it will never spawn. On top of Aman's shrine, there's two spawners that are supposed to spawn two reptiloids each, but it needs to be triggered a second time to spawn the second reptiloid. It's only targeted once, so only one out of two spawn from both. The last broken spawner is also in the pool area. On top of this wall, there's a Biomech Major spawner, but the trigger deactivates it instead of triggering it. There are two sneaky lava golems that will spawn if you let the wearables destroy the final area door. Make sure it's the fifth group of wearables to destroy the door, because the wearable spawner will deactivate the moment the doorway is open. One more sneaky spawner is this Nar spawner. It spawns 15 Nars as long as the harpies are alive. But the harpies are a much bigger threat, so it's natural that you'll kill them as quick as possible. You're gonna have to hide from the harpies and focus on the Nars first if you wanna get max kills. Final verdict? 1127 out of 1133 is the maximum amount of kills you can get in Karnak. Alright Luxor, first thing you want to do here is destroy the two furry statues and the monkey statue. They will spawn extra enemies. In the western area of Luxor there's a biomech miner that will not spawn. Nothing is targeting it. After grabbing the two key items you can go through the door here. This area has a clear spawner that isn't targeted by anything. There is also a highland on this roof that is never targeted by anything. Now for the remaining broken enemies, there's 9 enemies that are out of bounds that are not templates and will never teleport into the level. So 485 out of 497 it is. No wait, what the heck? We are better than that. In the western area you can get on top of this wall through a combined grenade and rocket jump. Now we can go out of bounds without cheating and kill the boxed enemies. There. 494 out of 497. Much better. The second secret level sacred yards is pretty crazy. You're gonna need to destroy every tree, statue and ornament to spawn extra enemies. 
Not to mention it's riddled with broken and awkward spawners. Do not grab the pill in the starling area, it will deactivate spawners. Wait a bit before collecting it and prepare to fight the Bahamak Major from up close. In the area where you kill Pinky, there's 5 Gnar spawners that have a capacity of 2 Gnars each. They're all only triggered once, so the second Gnar will never spawn. That's 5 broken enemies already. In the same area there's an enemy spawner in the water that's supposed to spawn a single fish, but nothing is targeting it and will therefore never appear. Fast forward to the area with the messed up gravity. Going for the secret where you can collect the Sphinx early on will deactivate a Biomech Miner and a clear spawner at the exit. You're gonna have to make a choice here, go for all kills and sacrifice a secret, or get all secrets and miss 3 kills. In the same area there's an enemy spawner that only spawns 1 out of 2 clear skeletons. To spawn both, it needs to be triggered twice, but it's only triggered once. <coughs> After pressing all switches and killing the Bionic Miner, there's gonna be a bunch of Harpies. Killing certain Harpies will spawn extra clear, but make sure not to kill them too quickly, or the spawned clears will occupy space for more clear, and not all of them will be able to spawn. Now for the other area, <laughs> oh no, we're not done yet. There's an enemy spawner in the water that's supposed to spawn 5 fish, but the trigger entity is never targeted. <coughs> After collecting the second Sphinx, a group of Reptiloids will spawn across the water. The spawners are only triggered once, but most of the Reptiloid spawners contain more than one Reptiloid. These are never triggered, so that 7 Reptiloids will never get to see. Mm. Oh, and by the way, the Crow Team dudes that emerge from the pyramid counts as a kill. Just kill them for calling you a moron. Man, what a mess. That's 358 out of 377 we can kill. The Great Pyramid, the final level. This one has a lot of spawners, but thankfully none of them are broken. They are very sneaky though. In the first arena, when all the Biomechs start appearing, make sure you wait before killing the 18th Biomech Major. Killing it will deactivate the Biomech Minor spawners, so make sure their spawners are done spawning first, then kill the Major. Once you're done with the first arena and Oxen starts chasing your ass, get ready for a world of pain. Each trigger will spawn a bunch of monsters at a very slow pace. But the trigger that's next will deactivate the spawners you just triggered. What this means is that you're only allowed to go through the next trigger once all spawners are depleted. I hope you're ready to deal with super slow wearable spawners that will take 20 minutes to deplete. Oh, by the way, you're gonna have to wait this long all while Oxen is chasing you. This of course is impossible because he can reach your position in less than 10 seconds and stump you to death. So you're gonna have to get him stuck so he doesn't bother you. If done successfully, you end up with 669 out of 669 kills. Wow, a serious end level with no broken kill count. That deserves a round of applause. There's one more level to go and that's the level that came with the demo version of Serious End back in the day. The layout is just like Karnak, but it takes place during the day. The enemy placement is completely different too, and so are the broken spawners. Just like in Karnak, this Rocketeer spawner is set to activate instead of trigger. He will never appear. Ankpool, we meet again. This is where we will find the remaining broken spawners. These 5 spawners are supposed to spawn 2 enemies each, but they are only triggered once, so only 1 out of 2 will spawn. 2 Rocketeers, 1 Bomberman, 1 Firecracker and 1 Clear will never spawn. And one last note, just like in Karnak, the Gnar spawner at the end will keep spawning Gnars as long as the Harpies are alive. Hide from the Harpies and focus on the Gnar spawner until it's depleted. And just like in Karnak, explore every inch, collect every item, there's some really finicky spawner triggers out there. Final verdict, 701 out of 707 kills is the maximum you can get. Before I wrap it up, I'd like to do a quick retrospective of the Series M playthrough I uploaded on YouTube. I claimed to go for most kills possible in each video, but I didn't always manage to and I'd like to rectify that. I didn't do any research on max kills possible until I reached Luxor, so let's see where I missed some kills. Temp of Hatshepsut, got all kills. Sand Canyon, got all kills. Tomb of Remedies III, missed one clear kill by not picking up all items in the final arena. Valley of the Kings, got all kills. Moon Mountains, I missed 3 kills in Moon Mountains. It's hard to pinpoint what I missed, but pretty sure it's enemies that fell into the abyss and survived. Oasis, got all kills. Dunes, got all kills. Even the Biomag Miners that are delayed by 27 hours. Suburbs, got all kills. Sewers, got all kills. Metropolis, ah, oh, this one is painful. 
I missed 31 clear kills because I deactivated its spawners at the end of the werewolf corridor. I didn't know deactivating spawners were a thing when I recorded this level. A real shame. Alley of the Sphinxes got all kills. Karnak. Ouch, another painful one. I missed 20 kills in this one. Pretty sure I missed some in the Enkpu area. There's two triggers at the beginning I didn't fire. Then there's the two lava golems I missed that spawn when the werewolves destroy the door to the final area. And I prematurely deactivated the Nar spawner at the end by killing the harpies too quickly. Luxor. At this point in time I did my research what each level's max kill count is, so I got them all. Sacred Yards got all kills. The Great Pyramid got all kills. And Karnak Demo got all kills. So, that's the first encounter for you. Even if you're not planning to go for 100% kills, I hope you found this video fun and educational. For me it truly put my mind to rest because for years I've been bothered by these broken kills and there was no one who bothered to find out why. I'm very happy to finally solve the mystery and to share it with other Series M fans. Up next is part 2 where we will do the same thing but for the second encounter. I hope to see you there and thank you very much for watching.